Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. The highly praised colored field paintings by Fiore I has been described as a book that takes the art lover on a journey of discovery with the artist as they embrace together the power of art. The artwork is unique. The curation is perfect. This book is a collection of prints and paintings by the artist Fiore, who was inspired by the color field and hard edge geometric abstraction paintings of American art. The paintings depict translucent and prismatic light with interplays of soft color gradations against hard edges and spatial divisions. They are at once subtle and bold, fluid and tense, moving across space that evokes a cosmic world. Fiore is a printmaker and painter. The artist holds a BA degree from the University of California, Berkeley, MA degree from California State University in Los Angeles, and an MFA degree from Washington University, St. Louis, Missouri. She taught at junior colleges in St. Louis, Missouri, Pittsburgh, and, uh, and others, ex- ex- exhibitions across uh, various countries worldwide, Munich, Los Angeles, and St. Louis, with awards being received in all three. Her works are in many private collections, Printmaker, painter, artist, Fiore I, author of Color Field Paintings, is our guest on This Week in America. Fiore, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Well, it's very nice to be with you. So impressed with the work that you're doing, and I tried to explain that to what people are going to see when they read your book. Tell us a little bit about the book and uh, sort of explain uh, a little better than I did on what we're going to find in the book, because this is so well done. Oh, well, as you said, um, my book is a collection of my prints and paintings that were inspired by the color field and geometric uh, abstraction of American art. There's about 29 works in there. Uh, The prints have colors and textures printed on paper and mounted on masonite or steel plates and feature paper and magnetic tape writers, which the viewer can manipulate and change and enhance the images. Uh, The paintings depict color, light, and movement, uh, soft color gradations pitted against hard edges and divisions that provide tension. Um, The images evolve through a series of stages from aqua variations to large multi-panels and then back to single panels with increasing complexity. And the single panels Uh, depict cosmic rays, um, prismatic light, and circular circular, uh, shapes that rise through deep space uh, comprising the uh, planetary series. And um, the works become more beautiful and visual and um, uh, inspires and uplifts. Um, The good news is that I like to mention that the book will be featured in the New York Times in about a month, and um, it's been picked up by Ingram, the, the large, the huge uh, trusted distributor. Oh, yes. So th- those have been good news that have recently befallen this book. <laughs> well, you've had a lot of great news. The book is Color Field Paintings. The author, Feore I, is our guest. I'll give you all the information. You'll find the book available at pageturner.us in the bookstore. Feore will have a website. If it's not up, will be very soon. It's F-A-I Paintings, P. A-I-N-T-I-N-G-S, paintings.com. We have all of that on our website, thisweekinamerica.us, so you can go there and uh, and find out more on the wonderful job that, uh, that Fiore has done. I want to talk about your background as an artist. Tell me a little bit about that and uh, your growth as an artist and your interest in, in this field of color field paintings. Um, well, uh, I've studied at the Munich Art Academy in West Germany, So I've studied uh, old masters and their technique, and I did a copy of Tintoretto's Christ Maria and Martha, 1680, in the Alta Pinacotheque in in the um, museum there. And um, so that's the beginning of my background. And then I I drew and painted all that inspired me in landscapes. I especially love movement of all kinds. So I went to zoos to sketch aquariums. Um, theatrical perfor- performances, 
where I tried to sketch the dancers, went to rodeos. And um, generally, I visited a lot of museums and galleries and, um, you know, to learn from other artists. And then um, I have a strong art history background. Really do. I mentioned all of the educational background, the practical background of exhibiting all across the world in many private collections. Fiore I is our guest on the program talking about her book, Color Field Paintings. You'll find the book at uh, the usual places, pageturner.us in the bookstore. Uh, FAIpaintings.com. I'll give you a full list of, of where the book's available coming up here shortly. Over your period, how has your, your practice changed over time? How has it evolved during this period? Well, my paintings became increasingly more abstract. And um, the biggest change was when I came under the influence of colored field paintings and geometric abstraction of American art. So um, I directed my lo love of movement. Instead of movement of animals and, and uh real-life objects, I directed them, directed my love of movement to color light and movement. So it's soft color gradations pitted against hard edges and spatial divisions that provide tension. Um, the transition, uh, transition from an emotional painterly approach to a rational hard edge approach took some discipline. It is, again, such a job well done. I have such admiration for the work that you do. And when you look into the, the work, the mind, the creativity of an artist, what is integral to, to the work of an artist? What's a key to, to your success in your creativity? Well, I think um, the integral of an artist is having a, a unique approach or perception or interpretation of an aspect of life that intrigues you and arouses your passion, and then um, to develop a body of work that is unique and has a consistent vision and of high quality. I think every uh, artist need, needs to accomplish that much. Well, as you're working and dealing with someone who wants to become a better artist, whether it may be a junior college student that you've worked with or people that that see your artwork across the world in exhibits and are asking you questions. What are some of the suggestions that you would give to, to an artist to, to make them better? Well, I think number one is strength, strengthen one's technical skills, be a strong drawer, and um, develop a strong sense of composition, um, study the principles of color, and um, I would say visit a lot of museums and galleries to learn from other artists and um, study a lot of art history. Um, one book, uh, Ernst E. Gombrich's The Story of Art, which is a classic, Fiden Press, 1950, um, that's a book that's great for not only artists, but you know, non-artists because it covers many cultures and it's, it's just a wonderful book. It's in, in its 16th printing, so you can see how popular that wow, book yes. is. I would, I would highly recommend that for anyone. But, um, but of course, you know, as an artist, you'd study a lot more um, individual monograms, and you're more focused, and you're more detailed in studying art history. Fiore I is our guest on the program. Her book is Color Field Paintings. You'll find it at the usual places. And let me go through the, the list now, and we'll have this on our website. It's uh, the book you'll find at Amazon Sites, at Barnes & Noble, Page Turner's Bookstore, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and a lot more. The book is available basically wherever books are sold, and you'll get all of that information. It's a pleasure to have Fiore with us on the program. And I mentioned the the, the background in teaching, and obviously you like to reach out to the young aspiring artists. What encouragement do you give them? Because I'm sure that... Uh, uh, along the way, there's some bumps in the road along the way. What encouragement do you give to a young aspiring artist to, to stay the course and to follow through on their dreams? Well, I would say pursue your inner drive to create and uh, let your inner growth propel you forward. Um, be persistent. Don't get discouraged. Um, be totally honest with yourself and brutally honest with yourself. 
if um, there's an area of weakness that you you feel you have, um, don't slouch it over. You know, pursue it, study it, because that will contribute to your inner growth. And um, don't be tempted by facile fame and money. And gradually evolve a body of work that is unique, consistent, and of high quality. Talk I would a- say that's the that's the path, general path one takes. Well, yeah, that's good background. And from someone who, who knows, who's been very successful in her career, the book is Color Field Paintings. Well, I want to talk about the, the role of an artist in society, the role that, that, that you've played in bringing color field paintings to life and bringing so much, so much pleasure to people. And art is sort of a nice escape now. It gets people thinking, it entertains, it gets us off what's going on in our day-to-day life, which can be rather frightening out there now. How do you see the role of the artist in our society and maybe how it's evolved over the years? Well, I, I would say, um, uh, of course, art is very personal, and not all artists want to be political artists, you know. Yes. But uh, I would say, in general, to be an astute, astute observer, um, to have a keen sensitivity about things, and uh, to have a conscience toward an aspect of life uh, that arouses your passion, and then to express the zeitgeist uh, or spirit of our time, I would say is the role of an artist in our society. As you were working on your book, Color Field Paintings, Theore I is our guest on the program. This is uh, her book that we're talking about. Were there surprising things that, that you learned in, in creating your book? It, the book is so enjoyable to the reader. How about the, what it brought you? Maybe surprises, maybe, maybe pleasure. What was it like writing or putting this book together, compiling this book? Well, my book, um, which depicts color, light, and movement, traces the development of, a mar- of my art through various phases, from simple to complex, um, to increasingly visceral and beautiful works that inspire and uplift. Uh, I am surprised at how well editorial reviewers and readers have followed and understood my, my development and growth and have embraced my art. So um, that's been a real joy. And uh, as, as I just mentioned, it's, been, it's going to be uh, featured in the New York Times and picked up by Ingram. And that was unexpected. It's, it's, it, you know, it's a wonderful news. And what I have learned is the importance of books, because I mainly wrote my book to keep a record of my work. Um, but books really supplement galleries, you know, galleries are still extremely important because you can really examine the actual works and, oh, and yes. uh, study the quality of the paintings, you know, and it's subject to art critics and things. So they play a very important role. But um, not all galleries have space for large paintings. Mine are quite large. And then, you know, the proper lighting and the space and just the sheer physical effort of transporting things from gallery to gallery, it's very cumbersome. And then there's the timing, uh, uh, the limitations of exhibition schedules. So um, they, they play a wonderful role, but I have learned through this experience how important books are, you know, because you can um, reach a wide um, range of readers, uh, not only in your own country, but elsewhere. And um, so that's been a real learning experience and joy for me. Boy, time going by so quickly. Theori I is our guest on the program talking about her book, Color Field Paintings. What would you like your, your legacy to be? And I, your legacy, your, you know, your writing every day, your painting every day. What would you like the, the legacy to be when somebody mentions Theori I and they go, oh yeah, I really like, what would you like the legacy to be? Well, my art depicts color, light, and movement. And uh, the light motifs that I've used so far are waves and rays. One can depict any number of other light motifs to use to, you know, depict color, light, and movement. But what I see um, that could enrich our vocabulary is like satellite imagery that we're so blessed to have through advancements in science. And um, images and 
angles and visions that come through space exploration travel. And um, furthermore, I see developing the direction of, of this art by incorporating modern architectural materials with their transparency, translucency, and subtle textures, and combining it with the artist's color, light, and movement, and tension, um, meticulously rendered. The images can be quite uh, stunning and dramatic and beautiful and inspiring. The um, possibilities are really tantalizing and endless. And um, if just one chance artist who encounters this book can be inspired to pursue this vision and create works of art of quality and beauty that's their own reward, and that for me, that pursuit for me would bring me ultimate joy. Well, I have a feeling you're going to be very joyful with the response that you're getting from color field paintings. I mean, and you mentioned all the exciting things happening now, all of the uh, the great reviews that you, that you've had on the book color field paintings. Uh, a minute or so here left in the program. Well, what was your inspiration? When in your life did you decide you were going to be an artist? You were going to be creative and and touch people in, in so many ways. And who influenced you at, at an early age? Well, well, I think you're kind of born with that. I think artists are born with this uh, innate yes. drive to create. You know, even even if they're going to be poor and can't eat, <laughs> that's what they want to do. You know, I mean, that's what they really would like to do. They don't. So um, you're born with that, I think. Um, and what was the rest of your question? Well, th that's interesting. The you know the, when you decided you would like to do this, and I guess another key for a, a young artist out there is just to adapt your diet to the amount of uh, money you've got coming in, because there will be probably difficult times. Were there times when you were starting that you thought, did I, you know, did I really choose the right path for myself? Were there were, were there any doubts as you were going through early in your career? Well, headstrong that I am, you know, yes. Uh, yes. Um, I just pursued it. I, I, I think artists who have this drive to create, they, they really, they can't be stopped. That's what they want to do. They say, I'll give you a corporate job for at $80,000 a year, and that doesn't interest them because they have this, it comes from within, you know, they can't help it. So they can't help it. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> the way I look at well, it. Yes, and uh, thankfully you look at it that way. I love the enthusiasm and the passion, and we sense all of that in your book, Color Field Paintings. The author is Fiore I. Spelling that for you, if you're Googling, it's F I O R E. AI. You'll find the book at pageturner.us in the bookstore. Other places, the Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner, as I mentioned, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and, and other places. And also at Fiore's website, that's faipaintings.com. All of this on our website, This Week in America. You'll be reading something in the New York Times here very shortly. The uh, The book is doing so well, receiving such excellent reviews. Fiore, congratulations on the success of Color Field Paintings, and thank you for spending some time talking about it on the program today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Very nice to be with you. It was great having you here, and I mentioned Page Turner as one of the uh, the outlets where you can get a copy of the book, and I know you've been working with them and, and getting the marketing, getting the book out there. What's that experience been like in working with Paige Turner? Well, that's been a really, really a positive experience. I've worked with two uh, wonderful executive and, and uh, senior uh, editorial reviewers. Um, they've re really taken my book to heart and given it all, everything they, they have you know, to pr promote it. So um, Paige Turner w was wonderful to w uh, work with for me. And an outlet for the book, pageturner.us in the bookstore, the other places that I had mentioned. The book is Color Field Paintings by Fiore I. That's F-I-O-R-E-A-I. All the information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.